Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all once again for joining in for today's CPD webinar. The topic for today's session is Law Office Expense Management. Uh, like I already mentioned, the CPD webinar is it accredited to one hour of CPD credits. And um, you will be, it's, it's going to be, the title of this is going to be uh, Law Office Expense Management. And make sure to look up for this using the same title. And uh, it's one hour for professionalism CPD credits. I'd like to begin saying thank you all for joining in uh, as we had a small break in between. And uh, we didn't have a couple weeks of webinar, but uh, we started off with a CPD session. And uh, if you, this is going to be pretty simple topic, but at most important as it's on expense management. And uh, it is not just office expense management. It is also going to include client expenses, which is disbursements. And uh, we're going to see in detail what Law Society is expecting you to do in terms of maintaining these reports, as well as recording these expenses or disbursements on behalf of the client and uh, recording them from time to time, ensuring that they are taken care of. So like every other webinar, we also have a set agenda for this webinar. And uh, let's go through the webinar's agenda quickly. I have, uh, I see that there are many chats coming in already. Uh, if you have any questions, please put in the chat uh, window and I will be addressing the questions towards end of the session. Thank you. As you all know that the Law Society compliance includes maintaining expenses, not just income, not just revenue, but also expense because it forms part of the PNL report, it forms part of income and expense statement, which is uh, a very, very important report for year-end. But when it comes to Law Society compliance, expense and disbursement report are forming part of the ledgers that are predominantly um, you know, used across all um, provinces. Like I said, since this is pretty important, let's quickly go through the agenda and then I will uh, make use of the first 35 to 40 minutes to go through the slides with me and the rest 20 minutes, I will make use of uh, our platform, which is ULaw, to showcase you how office expenses and disbursements are recorded in the program. The agenda, as you all see here, we're going to definitely see the difference between disbursements and office expenses. Um, as office expenses, we all know, is something that we incur for office-related um, purchases or office-related um, any other uh, payments or expenses could be rental, could be rental expense, could be um, courier charges, could be photocopies, any office expenses that is related to running your practice, that is related to um, making sure your office smoothly is part of the business or office expense. And disbursements are mainly um, uh, addressed as expense on, made on behalf of the client. Where as a as legal office, we are prone to uh, incurring expense on behalf of the client that the client would be reimbursing you for. Um, could be any application fee, could be any court filing fee, could be any photocopy charges or uh, courier charges again, but uh, specific for the file or matter that you're addressing to for this client. So the major difference between disbursements and office expenses, um, who you are incurring it for and what is it that um, you're going to be, uh, how are you going to be treating it is what we're going to be seeing in upcoming slides. And how to manage them is also something that we're going to see today because there are different ways that you could handle um, 
to both disbursements and um, office expenses. As you all know, disbursements uh, could be uh, done out of trust as well as general, whereas office expenses is done only out of general or operating account, where um, that is a main difference for um, ensuring that you're taking care of both disbursements and business expenses in uh, appropriate manner. And uh, types of general disbursements are also looked into today's uh, webinar. We're going to be seeing what are billable actuals, where do you, where can you um, probably um, make use of profit margin when you're doing disbursements, and um, and what are the ones that could possibly come out of trust account? What are the kind of disbursements that can be entered under trust, and uh, what goes under general? What are recovered? And uh, what are the expectations of law society to be put in? Uh, first of all, as we all discussed, today's um, main um, agenda or part of uh, this agenda is going to be what law society expects when it comes to disbursements. What is it that they want you to fill in as part of recording the expenses or uh, disbursements which could be recovered from the client? And at the same time, um, uh, how, how to follow the money, uh, where does it lead, and um, uh, how is it recorded within the program. And uh, lastly, we're also going to see the different types of reports that are part of uh, law society compliance. At the same time, what are available in our program for you to use while we're seeing the demo in the program in the last 20 minutes. And uh, this is what we're going to do within the next um, probably around 50 minutes. And um, if you all have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to uh, put it on chat window. Like I said, I'll be addressing it towards the end of the session. For those who uh, all joined a little late today, um, uh, today's topic is Law Office Expense Management. Uh, we're going to be both disbursements and office expenses. Um, the, the title will be here for you all to make a quick note. And uh, any any questions, please put it on the chat window for us to take it forward. All right. So quickly jumping into what is disbursement um, in pretty much all means. Um, it's definitely what an expense that you're incurring on behalf of your client, but um, it is something that you would be recovering during the period uh, you're working on behalf of them, and uh, you would be incurring these expenses either in the form of cash or credit, or um, could be your own pocket that you're spending it from. Um, and uh, as a lawyer, how you had um, probably paid out um, makes a big difference and how you're going to be reimbursed and what is it, what is the portion that you're going to be reimbursed is also equally important. So as you all know that disbursement is just an act of paying out of your bank account, could be trust or general or credit card or your own pocket and getting the same reimbursed from the client with either a profit margin or the actuals that you've spent for is known as disbursement. And uh, uh, basically, you will need to make sure that you follow the money that you're in, into the program, uh, which is very, very closely um, uh, similar to what has happened in the bank or what has happened in the real scenario uh, may it be uh, a simple photocopy expense that you're charging to your client that you have either incurred or that you have not incurred. If you have incurred, it means that, let's say, you have uh, made photocopies from a UPS store and you're actually charging them for what you've incurred. Or it could be that you're using your own office printer and that you have decided to charge them the amount which is par rate to... Uh, the market rate, and uh, uh, but it's a complete profit because all these paper and ink and uh, other printing 
stationery comes under the printing and stationery under office expenses while you're actually charging your client uh, the disbursement amount and it goes as a complete profit to you. So I will be definitely walking you through that while I'm doing a demo, but to maintain proper records of these transactions, it is very important that you follow the money. I always recommend my dear friends, colleagues, clients who are all doing bookkeeping to make sure that you follow your money while it goes out of your account, while it goes out of your uh, pocket, while it goes out of your specific credit card, making sure that all of these will be part of your office expenses or disbursements respectively. So when the money is going out, make sure that you are recording the expenses into the appropriate account and the rest of it is taken care while you're recording and you will be ensuring that all of these expense will be recorded in the appropriate ledgers. I request all of you all to give me a moment as my screen is getting stuck. Please bear with me for one moment and I'll bring up the screen. Are you all able to see my screen? I hope uh, if Steph, you can comment on the chat window, it'll be great. Awesome, thank you. Perfect, so as I discussed about tracking down these expenses, uh, how does this uh, occur to you? Uh, it's pretty simple, just follow your money. When you are working on a client's file and when you are making a simple decision, could be a postage courier or could be a printing copy or could be any, any disbursement, you just need to track down the disbursement, know how much you have paid and how much you're going to recover for it. What is the portion of that expense that you're going to charge them under the invoice as disbursement and what is it that you have incurred? The difference between both could be zero, which is the actual amount that you're charging them, or it could have a certain profit margin. And while you know that it either includes HST or it doesn't include HST, respectively, you will have to record it appropriately to match with what actually happened in the real scenario to closely match it with the bank, to make sure that everything that you had in your bank slip or in your bank transaction slip matching with that of what you're entering in your books. Uh, sometimes these disbursements are recoverable, which means that while you raise the invoice, uh, your client is going to pay for it along with the legal fee. Sometimes it could be uh, you know, added to your flat fee legal rate. It could be a package that you're offering them. But irrespective of that, it is important to record it as an expense into either the client's file or your office expense, respectively, and um, ensuring that you have been paid for it or you have recovered the amount. You could track down the same using your bank statement or bank account transaction so that you can keep a track of it in your books as well. And um, while tracking down these expenses, what are certain points that you can keep in mind so that you can manage them, um, making sure that it's the respective bank account that you used, either it's your personal or your operating or your trust account or your business credit card, um, respectively, that uh, you've used to record the disbursement. So while recording the disbursement, uh, which was paid for, 
um, you will need to make sure that you remember how was it paid. Uh, like I said, what was the method of payment? And um, what was the reason for the expense? Was it uh, something to do with um, you know, mandatory fees or something to do with uh, uh, could be recovery of expense, uh, like printing photocopies or other expenses that you could be recovering over the period of over the due course and uh, making sure that even the minutest of the details like the date, um, the, the reference number, client's name and matter that the disbursement is related to while you're making an expense. Make sure that you make a copy of that bill or that receipt so that end of the day, you are able to record at least the client's name and matter on the top of the slip, and you can go back into your, uh, you know, your Excel or your, um, you know, your program and record the details into the respective client and the matter immediately, so that you don't lose track of what were the details that was available on the slip, in order to match it closely with the bank transaction. So. There could be, like I said, several methods or ways you're making this specific disbursement. It could be trust, it could be general, it could be business credit card, which is also the general account. And um, it could also be your personal account, which is owner's pocket. Decide, first of all, what portion is to be charged to invoice, whether you're charging the entire amount you received or whether you're going to charge a portion of the amount that you're going to receive um, or you're going to incur rather, not receive. And um, what is the difference that goes in as a profit? Um, making sure that you have decided and uh, you follow that in your program or in your books and uh, making sure to pre-bill or preview it if you're using a program like ULaw, um, and then invoice, just ensuring that everything is fine uh, as per the wish, as per um, your decision, and then you go ahead to recover because once you finalize the invoice, if there is money lying in trust, you could recover it by simply transferring from trust to general and get paid for that expense. If not, you're going to record the invoice and the expense recovery is done by making the payment into general account directly. So those are some key steps that you want to keep in mind while deciding how you're going to manage disbursements, whether um, you know it's trust or general doesn't matter, but these are some key steps that you want to keep in mind while managing it. And um, moving further, it is also important to remember how did you spend the money and uh, how did you record it or how should you be recording it? Uh, let's keep it very simple as you all see here in the slide. Um, you want to make sure that there are only certain ways that you could do it. Uh, to break it into two, first of all, two, two windows or two tabs uh, there could be only pay from trust and pay from general while general i mean general business credit card or owner's pocket so basically it's general or cash or any other account and then the trust goes separate so wh while we're trying to keep trust as special as possible always because we don't want to make any tremendous error in there. We want to make sure everything goes in order. Everything goes uh, very, very um, meticulously done, um, ensuring that you have all the details of the code fee and other kinds of fees that is available um, uh, as part of your slip or as part of your records that you've made while making the payment and um, making sure everything matches as per the records. To create it, you will definitely need to make sure that there are certain types of payment that can go through from trust right away. Um, uh, most of it are done from general, but 
Uh, some of them are allowed to be done from trust, but these are mostly the non-profit ones because the uh, the ones with profit margin could be uh, something like I already mentioned photocopies, right? Because that's one of the most common examples that all of us uh, do uh, as part of disbursements. And um, but in terms of trust, uh, there can be there can never be a profit motive there. Because trust is your client's money, it's your client's common pool of uh, funds that's lying in your trust account. Making sure that you put it to good use, you put it to proper use is very important. So uh, law society only allows you to make certain types of trust disbursements of which one of it is very common like court fee or filing fee uh, or any other kind of fee that is easier if you can pay it directly from trust because it is most, mostly actuals that you're going to be uh, charging your client for such fees. There can never be any margin or profit margin in such types of disbursements. Hence, it's good you make such payments from trust directly. And when paid from trust account, you don't have to recover any expense because it is your client's money that you're taking out and you're using it and recording it in your books. It is not... Of course, your money, um, it is definitely uh, a pool trust of funds that is available in your in your trust account. And uh, you're making sure that you expense from trust and record it under the trust. And end of the day, it will reduce what is available in your trust. But it's either going to be, um, you know, a payment going out of trust or a payment going out of general and that you're going to um, either recover for it from trust to general or getting it paid into general directly from the client if there is nothing in trust. So if there is any money lying in trust and if there is no profit margin and if there is, these are some expenses that are um, uh, any court fee, any filing fee or any other types of fee it is highly recommended that you use the trust account to pay straight um, from it. And, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of benefits as we discussed about it. And uh, in terms of the second category, while the first category was paying it straight from trust, the second category is paying it from either general or business credit card or any other cash accounts or owner's pocket. It is, um, it is definitely, uh, it has much uh, leniency while compared to paying it out of trust, uh, slightly, but you still have to keep a proper track record of things that you're expending from your general as disbursement on behalf of your client, ensuring uh, you have recorded the proper date, uh, the amount with taxes or without taxes, and the method of payment, like I said, the, you know, general is vast. Trust is just simple. It's just one account, which is pool trust account. Whereas general is, it could be general, it could be business credit card, it could be personal credit card, cash, owner's pocket. There are tons of it, um, at least four to five different types of um, account that you can use for general account expenses. So making sure that all the information is captured while you incur the expense is very important. I wouldn't even hesitate to write down on a piece of paper that I'm getting probably invoiced for and uh, keep it ready or I would directly open my ULA program or any other um, method of uh, rec book, uh, books that you uh, maintaining, uh, making sure that all of these information such as the date, the taxes, whether it's inclusive or exempt, and the method of payment and other details for the matter and the client is very important while you're recording the disbursement that you've paid for from either bank, credit card, or any other personal account, which is owner's pocket. Um, so this is, as you all know, one of the most basic points to keep in mind while you're trying to record uh, the way the money was spent and ensuring that you will be recovering it in the near uh, future, either from the client uh, in the form of 
uh, trust to general as transfer or uh, as a client payment into a general account added along with the invoice. So just to quickly recap, uh, so far, uh, 25 minutes into the webinar, um, today's webinar is a uh, one-hour CPD session, and uh, the title for today's webinar is Law Office Expense Management. We are discussing about disbursements and office expenses uh, in law office. If you all have any questions, I request all of you all to put in uh, on our chat window, I do have one or two questions come in on the chat window. Don't panic that I'm ignoring. I will certainly take the questions towards end of the session. Thank you. I'm proceeding in with how to recover these disbursements. So we did speak about incurring the disbursement, recording it, the following certain type of certain type or method of recording the disbursements and. Um, and uh, now, how do we recover it? Uh, what sh should you do to recover these disbursements? Like I already said, disbursements um, are generally recovered back from the client um, it, as it's incurred on behalf of the client. However, how do you do it? It's very simple. While you're recovering your, or while you're raising an invoice to get your legal fees or to um, uh, you know, have your client payment uh, into a general account or have your retainer moved in from trust to general account. Along with that, you will also be raising an invoice for disbursements. If there is a, a disbursement, disbursement is added to the client's matter and the information that is recorded along with the date and other details that we discussed in the previous slides you will want to make sure that the invoice that you raise has all the details of these disbursement and whether it is paid from trust using the trust funds or the client directly pays into general using the client payment it is very very important if it is paid by you from your personal money it is also equally important for you to recover it and get the money transferred to yourself or even pay the third party if you're using your family credit card or something for an emergency purpose um, have the money transferred from trust to general and general to um, yourself or third party but the money cannot go directly from trust to um, uh, your personal account though because mostly trust is all either trust payout or trust transfer so invoice and move the money accordingly and make sure you have all of these updated in the respective ledgers and journals following the law society guidelines that I just prescribed. So it is not just important if you are um, aware about the rules, but it is definitely important that you follow it uh, all along, making sure that even a a small disbursement is recorded in a timely manner because this is not only just going to help you keep your clients records um, intact but it is also going to help you record uh, and uh, help you record the right set of data and make sure that all your um, reconciliation documents are going to be up to date because of this your reconciliation is going to be a cakewalk trust me because um, you know, reconciliation is all about having your, uh, you know, payouts and pain uh, up to date and uh, matching uh, so accurately and closely with what happens in your bank. Now, moving further down, I am able to discuss with all of you the types of disbursements. There are several types of disbursements. I know that disbursements is a simple word but at the same time it has larger meaning because there could be a dis uh, all of us know disbursement is um, uh, expense incurred on behalf of the client while uh, what type of disbursement is it can I can I call it uh, billable because all of them are billed but what about something that is with recovery of expense in actual nature which is something like uh, legal um, you know, something like a fee, which is client, um, um, you know, having filing done, you will be uh, incurring filing charges 
or a court fee, et cetera, that you could recover as actual. So there's billable, which could be going out of both trust and general. Some of them can go out of both trust and general. Some of them can go only out of general. There's nothing that could go only out of trust because there can be a lot of uh, uh, legal practitioners who don't have trust account, but they will definitely be having operating account or general account. So there could never be uh, a disbursement that says only out of trust. Both out of trust in general and only general are the options that's available in here. So if it's a billable, it can go out of both trust in general. If it is unit rate, something to do with photocopies or mileage, something to do with a little bit of profit motive or profit margin that could be part of it because only where photocopy or gas expense or travel time you could include both um, profit margin at the same time um, uh, you cannot use trust account in here so um, those are the times when you use only general account and um, while you're having actuals that you could choose to use trust that I already mentioned, it's better you use trust in case of actuals because um, uh, you know you are spending the actual amount, there's no profit here. But if you don't have a trust account, you can still use your general account to uh, uh, recover expense for anything that is even made actually or on actuals. And other than that, anything with profit margin, close your eyes, put it under general because trust cannot carry uh, any expense or uh, recovery of expense with profit margin. And, um, and the other ones are if you're outsourcing any work to third party uh, or consultancy with actuals, they can go out of both trust in general, depending upon what you have, uh, uh, what kind of bank accounts you have or what do you prefer rather. But if it's actuals, you can use both trust in general. And if it is with profit margin, it's very clear only in general. So now those are the types of disbursements um, with everything that is given. Um, we are so aware that there are some of these that you frequently used probably uh, some things like unit rate that photocopies or mileage for gas or uh, actual fee, um, uh, you know, like I said, court filing fee and other uh, fees on behalf of the client. Now, moving further down, documents that need to report disbursements um, that we see that law society uh, requires certain documents, you know, could be for monthly compliances, could be during audits, could be uh, for annual report filing, <laughs> but there are various of these that you see here in the uh, screen are some samples that law society demonstrates as part of trust and general ledger, uh, trust and general journals, and the fee book and uh, general um, receipts journal and disbursement journals. <laughs> Mostly if you see <coughs> these fee books are part of other documents, but ledgers and journals are part of the compliance documents. Proceeding, um, with what are the details that law society expects from these documents are definitely uh, particulars as to what are the payments made for, what are the expenses or disbursements incurred for, and um, what is whether whether it does include HST or non-HST or not just HST but taxes with taxes or without taxes. That's what I meant here and who is it paid to, the particulars such as the purpose of payment, everything matters here. So different journals and different ledgers and uh, fee books and expense report contains um, different uh, requirement that needs to uh, be submitted to law society. That is what you're seeing here in front of you in the screen. and. Uh, uh, it's very clear and evident that as you keep recording the information, it gets transformed into reports such as this while you're using programs like ULaw. Quickly going through types of 
office expenses and what are the office expenses um, and uh, what is also business expense as we all just saw what was disbursements types of disbursements and the reports that um, that probably show you different types of disbursements now about office expenses and uh, the types of office expenses uh, as we incur disbursements uh, on behalf of the clients we also incur office expenses which is for uh, our own uh, business to run it uh, smoothly uh, could be rent or could be buying equipments or office equipments or could be office supplies um, I could any kind of expenditure that is incurred on behalf of running office on behalf of running business um, are known as business or office expense this is basically a simple payout it's an expenditure it has you are not going to recover this from anyone but for your own revenue minus expense is what is known as profit or loss uh, in layman's term again it's just expense incurred for keeping your business running smoothly in in your uh, practice and um, making sure that you record it in the books to balance when you spend money that includes taxes or excludes taxes is equally important ensuring that you have recorded the data or details appropriately now like we saw types of disbursements like you know whether it was mileage or photocopies or actuals or billable there are also types of office expenses now all offices have commonly a few expenses such as you know um, uh, rental charges or uh, office supplies or stationery or um, you know could be anything to do with uh, expense to pay back your borrowings that is your repaying your liability and uh, <clears throat> bank charges are very common if you if you have an operating account and a trust account invariably banks charge into your operating account <clears throat> the bank charges and uh, other taxes etc now how to record them it's very simple first of all you will need to make sure that all of these expenses that you incur on behalf of your office not the disbursement make sure to capture certain information the following information especially uh, the type of expense date and the title whether it's rental or it's telephone or it's internet or um, it could be your law society fee or your law pro liability uh, insurance, etc. Uh, making sure that the title and brief description is provided on the receipt um, and ensure that you record directly into the program is one best recommendation that I could do. And who did you pay to? The method of payment, whether you used your um, office general account or whether you used your credit card or owner's pocket. How was it paid? Where did the money go out from? So again, follow your money. Um, so following money helps you to make a decision on how was it paid so that I could record it under the general account or my uh, cash or the owner's pocket or the credit card, right? So that is definitely recommended, uh, ensuring that you record what has happened in the real scenario is very very important quickly moving further down uh, about maintaining documents that you need for office expenses uh, there's expense book uh, there's also um, other ledgers that you can record um, that you can find out office expenses as part of uh, expense um, or disbursement journals um, and total profit and loss or income and expense statement and other borrowings report all of these form part of office expenses that you have maintained under your records and mostly the HST and GST or PST payable uh, will also provide all the expenditures that you have made because the taxes are eventually recorded from these 
and uh, it takes care of the needful for expense and uh, the total is also recorded from um, all of these documents that you see. There's a sample of these statements in front of you, uh, specially expense book, as you see on the right top corner, uh, with date and the client <clears throat> description and what kind of expense are these. Even though these are, some of them are not office expense, some of them are disbursements, but the expense book carries both of it. So you will be able to find office expenses as part of, uh, you know, let's say the expense book. And uh, if it is <clears throat> not showing up a title that says file name or matter name, something on the fourth line items talks about, fourth and fifth line item talks about business or corporate expenses. So which is very clear and evident that it's an office expense. So all of these reports are law society, uh, uh, you know, regulated reports. So uh, if, if you will need to uh, prepare this, it is very important that you record the piece of information into your program appropriately with the details that we discussed in the previous slide, right from the date to the details that um, you will need to provide. Just follow the money. Follow the money, follow the, follow the details that's available on the receipt, uh, where the income, uh, sorry, where the expense was incurred, and uh, the rest of the information that needs to fall into the report is pretty automatic. That being said, what forms part of this analytics? Because while you <clears throat> record these expense, it gets distributed into various journals and ledgers, and uh, you it it gets converted or it gets transformed into analytical data where you can definitely reveal several things that. Uh, you know, uh, it reveals several things that you will never know until you take a peek of peek of this instead of thinking about where your expense went into um, or where, um, you know, you have spent higher amount. It's just so simple that if you use a program like EULA, you're able to arrive uh, at these expense reports or uh, charts in no time where all the top expenses, uh, the ratio that you have spent on rent or expenses on clients or printing stationery and any other office expenses shows the health of business. That way you not only know your future, but you're also able to optimize and uh, you know make a make a decision accordingly proceeding uh, further you are also able to know that analytics helps you to visualize a lot of these data and it not only provides you with um, you know numbers but it also gives you a lot of unknown information that is related to your office expenses or disbursements or overall expense analytics and um, it it transforms the data into next level. So I, I can definitely vouch for it because those are one of the benefits of using a legal accounting software. You enter the data and you forget what comes in end of the report because um, it, everything else is taken care of by us. Recording the events when and as they happen is something that I always recommend my clients. Keep your keep your program open or keep your Excel open um, and uh, just keep recording expenses uh, and events as it, it occurs and um, making sure that the financial records and bank records are as close as possible to your books makes the reconciliation task so simple. And uh, to maintain all of these documents Make sure that the data entry that we spoke on the first 10 slides on how to manage, um, uh, you know, those data inputs, how to how to bring in uh, the data into system matching with the um, actual event. Uh, 
you know that is the important part that is where your um, your work is more strenuous if it is if it or at least it is it is required to be focused because that information is what the software transforms into these reports that you submit to law society and finally finally it is all about compliance and accountability whether you know you are able to adhere to all of those compliances that is laid out by law society and you are able to generate those documents and and you have obviously been able to do that because you are accounted for it and ensuring that these analytical reports are generated from time to time ensuring all the health check is done and uh, end of the day it's about making it ease to use or ease of use and um, you know it shouldn't be a burden that recording these disbursements or office expenses are something that you want to ignore while <laughs> recording revenue or raising invoices are definitely a favorite part of our job uh, i mean of course disbursement still forms part of the invoice as it gets to your client while office expenses are also equally important to arrive at the um, you know arrive at the right um, health of your firm or your practice now as i discussed about benefits of using the program i would also uh, like to include about the free 30 day trial ulaw provides um, please go on to our ulawpractice.com or ulaw.io and uh, register for a free trial if you're not a current user of ulaw and uh, try out and see how disbursements and office expenses are um, definitely helpful now we have about exactly 14 minutes remaining like i said i want to make the best use of what is available in our program to showcase to you um how disbursements or office expenses are uh, recorded and also transformed into data that law society will want in form of these reports taking a quick one minute break here to remind you all that today's session is a 1 hr cpd session it is uh, accredited to 1 hr professionalism cpd credits and uh, topic for today's session is law office expense management and uh, it is valid across ontario alberta new brunswick and british columbia I'm looking into the chat window. There are a couple questions that I will be definitely answering uh, shortly, and uh, the ones that I have got on individual chats, I will either come back to you on individual chats or I will be emailing you once I'm done with this webinar. Proceeding into the program, as you all see, the ones who are already using Eula, you must be pretty familiar. But I'm just going to quickly showcase you what I just went through in the last. 15 minutes almost um right in front of you is the dashboard i have recently added a matter this morning i had quickly taken that michael brown matter uh it's a small claims matter They're, this client has a $1000 trust receipt which is a retainer lying in trust um i have probably added a flat fee for $500 plus taxes which is coming out to 565 there's about 435 sitting in trust of which i know that there's going to be a disbursement of about $200 which is nothing but uh, a court filing fee so now i know that when i click on disbursements tab i have several options to add a new disbursement now here is where i'm going to use the method that i said let me follow the money when i follow the money that $200 is an actual amount so since it's an actual amount i'm going to pay it out of my trust account like i said ones who don't have trust actuals can still be paid out of general but since i have trust and since i have money sitting in trust i'm going to go to paid from trust enter the 200 dollars 
follow the date if today is fifth but i did it on monday which is the first of november and how did i pay for it let's say it was check no it was an online payment it was a simple online payment maybe i could say wire transfer enter the reference number uh, it could be anything that you see on the wire transfer slip and let's say this was something to do with the filing fee and uh, paid to probably courthouse and payments so the 200 dollars is out of trust and this provides you with the form 9a immediately but form 9a is for electronic trust transfer since this is only a payout from trust you can just simply ignore it and um, immediately after that you realized that there was also a simple disbursement for photocopies that was done from your general account but it was something that you didn't incur but you wanted to charge your clients so i went into miscellaneous expense from general there's a top portion and bottom portion uh, since these photocopies were done using your office printer but you wanted to charge the client 35 dollar tax exempt maybe and uh, the bottom portion is being left empty because this is something you didn't incur but you are charging your client so this is the one with the profit margin so you have to use expense made from general and uh, once you're done with that please save there's nothing to do with method of payment or receipt number nothing there because you didn't actually incur that expense you just made a profit margin in there for the 35 dollars by simply charging for photocopies that you used from your office now proceeding further there's another $200 to refund or payout because you have charged your client for legal fee 500 plus taxes you have charged your client for uh, payment from trust for the legal um, filing fees and uh, for photocopies and uh, now what is there in trust needs to be removed from trust paid from trust it is nothing but uh, a refund payout so check you decided to give them a check and then the description is going to be refund uh, of retainer and pay to michael brown you can print a check and payments so these are part of what you wanted to know so you, what is remaining in trust is nothing but the 600 dollars which is 565 your legal fee and 35 your disbursement from general which you can invoice complete of course you're going to preview it just to save a little time i'm skipping the preview invoicing it here and downloading the invoice so that you can see the disbursements and the legal fee there for your reference and uh, the rest of it is available right here so once all the money is out the projected balance is zero so here you get to see the legal fees followed by the disbursements so you can see whether it's taxable or non-taxable and your payouts from trust with the payment into trust and the balance due is over here so when you go back into your ULO account you get to see that projected balance is zero on the top now if i go into accounts just to see what the disbursement journal shows you will be able to see that general disbursement journal for daily or for today uh, you can actually see that transaction that was made since the general account was not touched for that 35 dollars it was blank it is empty over here same way if i go into client trust payments or client's trust and put in today or even remove all clients it's loading accounts just bear with me for a moment remove all clients let's put in michael brown and download just for michael brown you will see that the money that came into trust and the disbursement that happened out of trust is right here just want to quickly show you how this is done Bear with me for one moment. Compliance, monthly compliance. 
Clients Trust. Remove all clients just today. Michael Brown, download. That's the one. So the disbursement that we just made from Trust for the $200 refund retainer is right here. This is a part of Law Society Clients Trust Ledger. And then let's proceed further to show you the rest of it, which is going to be under accounts. Let's say you're adding an office expense now. And at this point in time, let's say this was a simple printing paper purchase under printing and stationery. And this was something about $25. And this was purchased at Staples. So just watch me that as I incur the expense, I try to record it with as much information as possible. The date, the description, and even the chart of accounts that I want to put it under the printing paper. I didn't, I didn't go into postage or courier and enter the printing paper. I wanted to make sure that it goes under printing and stationery. And then so that the respective ledgers are picked up and you get to see all the details in here. And, uh, and then you proceed further with adding all the rest of the information and then the method of payment and then submit. The moment you submit that your general expense book gets to be, um, it's probably seen with the details, which is, let's put it as today and download it, you get to see <clears throat> the information. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was recorded for first of, just give me one moment. Sorry about that. I think I have too many of these documents open. Just bear with me for one second. Yes. So again, I want to show you how uh, the expense book records this transaction under uh, Let's put it under today that I just worked on. No, not today. I think it was on 1st of November. Let's put it as date range, 1st of November. So you will get to see all those that happened on 1st of November. And Michael Brown, whatever we did for Michael Brown on 1st of November, the printing paper that... $22 plus taxes, 25 that I just recorded is over here. I mean, sorry, not Michael Brown, but at least uh, the business or corporate expenses. So anything that is regarding uh, the client file comes under with the client's name, but anything that is office expenses comes as business or corporate expense. Going back into it, just want to quickly show you the general disbursement journal. Let's put it as probably 1st of uh, November to today's date. Download it. And you get to see all those disbursements, general disbursements, especially in case of uh, Michael Brown, if you've made anything, that all of these disbursements show up with the details respectively the check number, the particulars, what is it for the client name and particulars and the expense, whether it's taxable or taxable respectively. Quickly back in here, just want to show one more thing. Uh, just imagine the document generation having the other expense book here, expense, expense book, and also the balance sheet and profit and loss showing details of what you have incurred as an expense today or from 1st of November. You will be able to see all of those details as part of the recovery of expenses in here. So in today's recovery of expenses, these are part of disbursements which you have recovered gradually and it has been part of the respective statements. So coming back to it to or towards the closure, I'd like to tell or mention here that it is very important that all those minute details go into the respective books of accounts so that end of the day, whether it is law society compliances 
or your reconciliation documents or for the purpose of reconciliation uh, to be easier it is very important that you record details such as date and um, particulars and the method of payment and uh, how was it paid whether it is something that you want to make payment from trust or general respectively whether you're going to recover it as an expense from the client or whether it's an office expense classifying it and entering it from time to time is very important and end of the day it helps you provide in all the reports that is required for both law society and your business um, or practice which improves definitely the business health and in turn gives you all a peace uh with this i'd like to come to end of this webinar and um i'm going to quickly take a pause uh and see if you all have any questions uh feel free to email us on support at the rate youlawpractice.com if you have any questions regarding this webinar and i'll be happy to assist you um if you all have any other questions from today's session uh the chat window is right here on top uh please make use of it uh, i'll be happy to assist and uh, clarify all the queries just going to quickly stop recording so that it's not too lengthy for the one seeing it but i thank each one of you joining in and showing support uh just want to let you all know that today's session once again was a cpd for 1 hour and uh, the cpd uh credits is accredited for 1 hour professionalism cpd repeating again and the topic for today's session is u law expense office expense management and um, it is also including disbursements uh, my colleague stephanie has entered all the details in the chat window it is easier for you all to note in so if you want i can bring back in uh, the title law office expense management is the exact title for you to claim the credits and it's valid across ontario alberta british columbia and new brunswick i'll quickly stop the recording so we can discuss further thank you